Welcome to Soccer Smart, the only online cognitive soccer coaching instruction course online at www.soccersmarttraining.com. Today's video is going to discuss using grids on the field to teach the game of soccer. More specifically, though, using Pep Guardiola's positional gridding system on the soccer field. Enjoy the video. Here is a picture of a full field. As you can see, it is split into various grids on the field. This is the exact positional grid system that Guardiola had imprinted on the field when he was at Barcelona. I use the gridding method to teach many aspects of the game. Guardiola is teaching specific positional play by using these grids. Um, something also that Roberto Martinez has used quite effectively when he was at Wigan and now at Everton. Now, the high priority areas in this grid I've outlined for you in red. Those are the areas where most goals are created. People sometimes think that most goals are created out wide. This is not the case. Most goals, most assists are created from the red areas that you see there in the grids. So in Guardiola's system, these are very, very high priority areas to penetrate. These are also areas where when players receive the ball in central areas, you can see the two red grids plus the six other central grids at midfield. These are areas where players have multiple decisions. They can go both ways on the field. They can go to the left, to the right, and they can penetrate down the middle. Very high priority he places on centralized grids. Now I've outlined for you in yellow the wide areas. So all the central areas you could see, which are the high priority areas, the yellow areas are used more often to move the defense and to shift the defense quickly so gaps appear in between the back four. So as that ball is shifted from side to side to the yellow areas, it creates openings. So if you shift the ball back to the middle, you can exploit the defense. So you're actually just moving the defense around. Um, the only disadvantage of being in the yellow area is that one side is the sideline, so it reduces the number of options that the player has. Now what I'm showing you is a 3v2 overload in a central area of the field. Now, when you break up the game positionally into these grids, players can be assigned certain responsibilities in areas. So when the ball gets worked into the middle of the field here, if there's only two defenders, we can shift in another attacking player to make it a three versus two in the area where the ball is. The idea is, wherever the ball is, can you create some sort of a numerical advantage in that area of the field? Now, we could talk more about in a cognitive perspective, what gridding does. You actually have things in your brain called grid cells, and the grid cells help you organize space, time, movement, speed, all those types of things. So it's very important to play on the field in realistic grids that transfer directly to the real game. I could continue this video for a long time about gridding and using the positional grids on the field. At the end of the day, you really want to construct your own exercises and team tactics using these grids on the field to show the player's specific responsibilities and positional play using these grids, how to create overloads, how to move the ball from a central grid to a wide grid and back, and how to shift the defense and the purpose of shifting the defense to open up the gaps. All these things can be taught. Team shape, compactness, vertical compactness, even as you look at the grids, playing in between the lines is always something that coaches emphasize, but also now not just playing in between the lines, but getting into those centralized grids to, to penetrate and hurt teams. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the online cognitive soccer diploma at www.soccersmarttraining.com.